Okay, on this video, I'm going to give you a little bit of context of how engineering economy kind of fits into your possible working life and how you might, you, this might help you as you move up an organization. Um, so I'm going to talk about um, this idea of who has um, authority to okay expenditures and then a little bit about the process of capital budgeting, which if you remember from the last bid, um, video, we talked about capital expenditures, well those are approved generally in a yearly cycle. So you put together a proposal for projects and then they get approved and we'll talk a little bit about that cycle. And then lastly, I'm going to talk about multiple criteria analysis because really most um, decisions aren't just made verse on financial issues but are also made on other kinds of issues and I'll, sh I'll show you how that's sometimes done. So this here, here is a look of a, just a general organization of a company where there's the people at the top and then there's the workers at the bottom. In this case, it shows engineers at the bottom, but you know, it could be anybody. So what happens is at the highest level of the organization, those people have a very high level um, of ability to approve expenditures. At the lower level, the expenditure approval is less and less. So actually at every organization, they have kind of dollar limit approvals. So let's say engineers are able to approve a $100 expenditure. And the next level are able to um, approve 10,000 level expenditure. And then it increases all the way up to the board of directors is able to authorize any expenditure. So that's how organizations work. And then also, that also is increasing authority levels. So you can see that the people at the top are the highest in authority and the people at the bottom are the lowest. So having this in mind when you're thinking about projects or proposals um, is good to remember. And then also at different kinds of companies have different kinds of evaluation methods. So at very sophisticated large corporations, they often use very, um, very fine and, and academically correct methods of evaluation of projects. So they might be asking questions like, what internal rate of return should we be getting for this level of risk on this project? And there's people that spend all day long looking at this. Now, when I was working, I worked at um, a large oil company, and I was in the department that did a lot of this kind of work to look at exactly how should we be evaluating things and um, the methods involved in that. At smaller companies though, like if it's a one-man show or a garage business, um, mostly those decisions are made in pretty simple terms, but it's necessary to be simple because you might not have enough money to make expenditures. In a larger corporation, you pretty much have an unlimited budget because you can go borrow money or you can issue new stock. But in a smaller company, you really are limited by the amount of money you have. And then your question often is related to cash flow. If I spend it now, how soon will I get it back? Now, in large corporations, they're not so much of a concern about that because cash flow, again, is a little bit, is easier for them to manage. So just understanding the differences in, if you work for a small company, some of these methods that you we're learning in engineering economy won't be applicable at all because the company won't, won't need that. Um, definitely calculations of cash flow and things like payback are going to be useful. But if you work in a large corporation, they'll be using very much internal rate of return, net present value, discounted cash flow, all the things that you'll be um, learning in this class. Now look a little bit at the capital budgeting process. I talked about that a little bit in the intro that you know every company sort of has a yearly process associated with um, getting projects initiated. So I'm just gonna, lots of companies say start at different times. I'm just gonna assume we're gonna start at September when we have a submittal from the lower levels of the corporation to the higher levels on project proposals. These would include calculations of net present value, internal rate of return, and non-monetary benefits and costs. So looking at, these, this is what this division is proposing to do. We would like to do this. And then at the corporate level, they go through a ranking process. So they have all of these proposed projects and they rank them associated with some strategic direction or what seems better than the other ones. And then each of them then are evaluated on strategic issues and money available. So we look at all of these ranked proposals and you say, well, which is the best for our strategy? And do we have enough money to fund? How many do we have enough money to fund? And then in January, they usually this corporate entity does uh, 
um, presentation or something to the board of directors and ask them for approval. So the staff people might go up and give a presentation and said, this is what we think we should do this year, and the board of directors would approve it. And then that those projects, um, at once approved, will be notified to the divisions, and then they will start executing these projects. But in, in the background also, in April through August, you'll be executing the projects and also developing new projects so that you can then submit it in September, and you will be auditing old projects. So the function is an annual function, but it's ongoing too. As engineers, though, these are the things that you would be um, kind of working on preparing proposals, executing the projects, and then looking at how things um, went in the, in the previous projects you did. At the executive level, they look at, at, or the strategy or the corporate level, they'll be looking at these things. They'll gather all the proposals, rank them, and then approve them or not approve them. Um, and so that's pretty much how um, the capital budgeting process progresses. The next thing we're going to look at is may maybe a little bit more at this area that the things they might do in December is looking at what are the st what are the non-monetary kinds of issues and the strategies that might look at. So one method of doing that is multi-attribute analysis. So here what I've done is I've each of the A through E are different alternative or different projects. We want to do either project A or B or C or D. And then there's certain criteria. Now, rate of return is something we can calculate in engineering economy. So each of these projects has a rate of return that's been calculated. But then there's also some other issues that have been hard to quantify or maybe more qualitative in nature. So I've listed a couple here. Obviously, there's many, many different kinds of qualitative um, criteria. In this case, I put flexibility and sustainability. So you can see that, for instance, on the project D, it has a very high rate of return, but kind of low sustainability. So how do we make a decision about that? And then in the case of C, it has a lower return, but high flexibility and excellent sustainability. So how do we manage that? So one of the ways that it, this is done is sometimes companies use a more qualitative look at this. I'm using something like color coding, where red would be bad and yellow is okay, and green is pretty good. So if we look at this, we might not be able to make a particular final decision, but it might eliminate some of the alternatives. For instance, alternative B doesn't really look like it would be a satisfactory alternative. And kind of two reds and one yellow, that doesn't look good. Or E also doesn't look that good. So this has a way of kind of leading you in the right direction. Another method is a scoring method, where you look at all of these alternatives and you score them. For instance, if you remember alternative D, and you look there, it has a, f a score of 5. Let's go back and look at that. It has a 20% rate of return, so that's a very high rate of return. While C had a very low one, so we just gave it a 2. So what we do is we score these in a kind of a equalizing method, and then we assign a weight to each of the criteria. So you can see that the um, rate of return is a 50% weight. I mean, that's pretty important. Sustainability is 20% and flexibility is 30%. And then we do a weighted average. And when we do that, we can see in this case that D has the highest score. And, and we, that will lead us to further investigate. Or we might say, actually, you know, D is the one to go with. So this is another method um, or an additional method that's used in decision making. So what we've covered in this little video is a look at expenditure authority, who has expenditure authority, and how that works in a corporation, the capital budgeting process, that annual process, and how it is how we go through it, and then this other um, method that, that I call multi-criteria analysis to look at um, decision-making for projects.